Okay, so let us continue where we left in the previous uh, module. We were talking about uh, different ways of uh, managing the waste, where we have uh, reduce, reuse, recycle. So, this is a in the in this particular slide that you see, this is a typical hierarchy that is uh, you will you will find in any of the waste management rules throughout the world. You, you pick any of the waste management rules, whichever country you want to and you will see this kind of uh, waste hierarchy. So, what does it show? It is basically telling us that uh, we should try to prevent the garbage and on the left as you can see, there is a most favored and least favored. So, as we go towards the top, that is actually what most of the rules favors. So, what is the most of the rules favors around the world? To prevent and minimize. We have to reduce the waste. We have first of all, we want to prevent the waste that is being produced. So, produce less and less amount of waste and then even if it is produced, uh, try to minimize the quantity. So, that is the most favored option. Then the second favored is reuse. If you can reuse the waste rather than throwing it away, then your recycle and then finally disposal. So, that is in what uh, the rules tells us, what is uh, throughout the world, but what is actually happening is, is kind of the reverse of that. So, the size of this pyramid, the different components that you see, the different slices of this pyramid most the biggest one is disposal. So, that kind of gives you it is it is a proportional to what what kind of percentage goes in different stream. So, most of the waste is being disposed today and less is recycled, even less is reused and even less is prevented or minimized. So, that is that is kind of uh, uh, unfortunate part of that, but even the rule suggests that we should try to have uh, more and more prevention, minimization, reuse, but unfortunately we are what is happening on the ground is opposite of that. And that is not only in Indian context, that is a global context and globally also we have been disposing. Uh, when we say disposing even thermal treatment incineration plants, those are also considered part of the disposal stream. And of course, people can debate whether it is a treatment or disposal, but uh, for now we, we will consider it as a part of the disposal stream. And uh, so, more and more waste has been disposed that uh, even you will see in few slides down the line as well. So, when they are disposed, landfill, so which is uh, this is a landfill, not, an in, not a dump. So, there is a difference between the two. Landfills are the de facto choice for waste management. And we like it, we do not like it. I will show you a world map uh, just in uh, like in few slides down the line, uh, which you will show that landfills are actually the predominant way of waste management pretty much throughout the world. So, it, they are the defective choice for waste management, and but they do cause lots of problems for the environment as well. Uh, with problems in terms of the land usage, air, surface water, groundwater, pets. So there are problems uh, associated with that. Uh, if you can look at this slide on, uh, on over, over here, what you see, this is a that's the top cover of the landfill uh, on top, uh, and then you have the side slope. This is the side slope and this is the bottom liner, this is the side cover, this is the side liner and then you have the once the garbage has been filled up, you can put a top cover on, to, uh, on, uh, on the landfill as well. So, this uh, as you can think about that this, this is space in here is where the garbage is being dumped. So, you in a very simple way, you can think about these landfills as a huge polythene bag. So, it is a big polythene bag where you are putting all these garbage in. So, this uh, polythene bag has uh, impervious layer on the side on the bottom. So, when the waste degrades, it produces certain moisture and that moisture is called leachate. So, that leachate since it is being produced, it has to be collected and has to be taken it away. Otherwise, it, uh, it impacts the landfill stability. So, as you have uh, as uh, all of us have uh, studied in, term, in terms of our basic physics also in fluid mechanics and other courses that uh, there will be a buoyancy, there will be a uh, like a pore, pore water pressure and those once the pressure is too high, we will have the impact on C and phi value from our soil mechanics class, the geotechnical part even if you do not understand, if you are not taken, if you are not a civil engineer, have not taken a soil mechanics, do not worry, just think about from your basic physics as well. So, if you have a uh, pressure being built up and that leads to uh, like a uh, instability of the system and then you will have uh, things uh, collapsing out. So, that is what if you think about uh, uh, in the hilly areas, especially say if you are from India and you go to Himachal or uh, uh, Sikkim and those areas during uh, the monsoon period, 
you what you see is uh, there is a landslide. Most of the landslide that happens happens during the monsoon, during the during the rain event. Why? Uh, always think about the why part. So why it happens during the rain event? Because this uh, water gets into the pores and then they creates the pore water pressure and the C and phi that they struck the uh, the sear the the strength of the material goes down because of uh, uh, there is a this, uh, this pore water pressure acts kind of in the opposite direction and that leads to uh, destruction of uh, the there is a slippage and then you will have uh, uh, destruction uh, of uh, the of the slope surface so to to prevent that we have to collect this leachate out and uh, and this leachate is what is this is a residual contaminant in the waste which leach uh, leak out from the landfill it's a highly toxic sometimes 100 times as stronger than the sewage and very odorous uh, very smelly can lead to groundwater contamination uh, ground gradient of the landfill so that's why leachate has to be collected and taken it away then that's on the leachate part then the, when the waste degrade it also produces methane so it produces a methane gas anything when it's biodegrades in an anaerobic system it will it will produce methane uh, so once uh, things are produced a methane methane has to be uh, removed uh, so it's uh, methane production is a uh, problem uh, for the air it's uh, methane is not doesn't have the smell but uh, associated gases along with methane there are several uh, sulfur based gas several other uh, uh, non methane organic compounds it's a short form is nmocs they have certain smells especially sulfur gases have some smell and that create the order problem and methane is 25 percent 25 times more powerful than co2 in terms of the greenhouse gas so that's uh, why methane has to be captured and has to be either used for energy purposes or at least flared so you burn this methane and convert to co2 so one mole of methane will burn and produce one mole of co2 so at least you are reducing the environmental impact associated with that so that's what uh, but again the gas can be used in a, and it can be can be beneficial reuse as a renewable energy sources the whether it's a renewable energy or not that's again again uh, we uh, there is a debate on that where, but uh, it's a, in some places they call waste to energy as a renewable energy and the other when landfill gas to energy as a renewable energy and other places it is not uh, whether waste is a renewable fuel we don't know uh, but uh, it's uh, it's again uh, it's it's a debatable question. Some will argue in the for, some will argue in the opposite. But uh, it, it's well, the bottom line is that uh, can be used. This energy, uh, since uh, methane has certain heat value, it can be used as an energy source. Then, uh, when you are closer to the landfill, litter is a problem. The area uh, around the landfill has to deal with lots of debris being blown away. You go to any landfill site from around a kilometer away, you will know that you are approaching a landfill because you will see a lot of uh, uh, these days especially the plastics all along the side of the road uh, you don't see that much in a developed country but you see in a developing country uh, because the developed there are ways to control it so in uh, developed countries they follow those rules and regulation they are actually the implementation of the rule is much better although the rules are pretty much the same but uh, that's why they don't you don't see it over there but in here uh, you do see that so if you don't want to go for landfill what are the alternatives although as i said in the previous slide landfill is the de facto choice which i will show you in a couple slide down there as well i will show you the data that i'm why i'm saying that but if you don't if you don't want to go for the landfill what are the alternatives we have one of the alternative which is very popular getting very popular across the world especially in a high dense uh, population uh, uh, urban areas is the incineration plant uh, incineration plant is uh, where you take the garbage you burn it you produce electricity out of that and whatever is the residual you can do some resource recovery if possible if you have a system in place otherwise you just put it in a landfill but at least 90% uh, of the garbage is gone it uh, it's uh, got converted uh, to some sort of uh, heat and uh, heat uh, so that's that can be useful as well so there are certain positives uh, of going for incineration you can have a large volume reduction uh, volume of the waste going down less landfill space is required just more time to fill up the same uh, uh, volume so if uh, it's a uh, it, since the volume has gone down as i said from 100 tons to around 10 tons of residual so now the landfill life has gone up by 10 times if and if you are using this 10 tons to go to the landfill so so that's that always helps because the landfill space is very costly too so and then it can be used for potentially potential energy recovery so you can use energy out of that so in uh, so that's uh, that's always a plus point and the negative part is the trouble of air pollution 
So, there is, there is always, uh, although I will show you when we go towards the thermal treatment chapter, I will show you that there are technologies out there today. So, if you do the incineration plan properly, it, this is, uh, it can be done, it, uh, it, is, uh, it is possible to be done and uh, only thing uh, from an Indian context point of view, what we need to do is we need to at least have some sort of source separation. Although there are technologies out there are today, which can uh, even do waste to energy or incineration plant at very low calorific value. Some technology claims even at 1200 to 1500 kilocalories per kg, uh, which is again a debatable part, uh, because uh, we have not seen many of those plants up and running. But the claims have been made, uh, especially a lot of uh, Chinese companies which is trying to get into India in the waste to energy plants, they do claim. Uh, because they are having low calorific value waste, uh, especially for the mass burn facilities where you are bringing everything and putting into the into the uh, your hooper and then it goes for burning. But uh, uh, it's but it's still people are uh, a little bit uh, like uh, worried about uh, air pollution issues. Uh, although the newer, uh, if you look at the uh, newer air pollution data uh, coming out from many of these facilities around the world it looks to be that air pollution control, air pollution aspect is under control, as long as the, the plant is operating this air pollution control systems. What happens is many times the plant just does not want to operate it and I do not know who gives them those kind of advice, because these, uh, the equipment goes for these uh, air pollution control or uh, even the sewage or effluent treatment plant, those equipment they actually go bad uh, more quickly if it is not being operated. So, they are supposed to be operated uh, for most of the time. So, they should be operated, so that you can uh, uh, things uh, can be uh, managed. But since they are not operated properly, that we have a air pollution issues, where the air pollution becomes a problem, extensive uh, stack gas control. There have been some baggage associated with that as well. Uh, there is uh, many uh, countries uh, have used uh, in the past has some issues with air pollution. Again, uh, going back to the contest of New Zealand, they are uh, totally against uh, doing any sorts of uh, waste incineration, because they had some issues in the 80s in terms of uh, some uh, improper waste uh, incinerator being planned there. So, so in terms of negative is still troubled by air pollution, uh, some materials do not burn. So, what you do with that? So, you have ash plus this non combustible they do require subsequent landfill disposal. Then this, there are siting problems uh, or you have to have a siting issue, so which is similar to the for the landfill as well. So, so that is uh, incineration is one part, uh, which can be used as a alternative to landfill. The other part is recovery of uh, reusable product compost or refuse derived fuel. So, it is when you try to recovery, again uh, it should be able, to, you should be able to sell it. So, if you are trying to get some product out of that or you are trying to get some material out of these uh, waste stream, you should uh, when, whenever you try to do that, you have to invest certain money in the material in the, into the manufacture into the plant in terms of separation, in terms of having a main power who can do all those kind of stuff. So, there is of course, a labor cost associated with that. At the same time, when you buy some new of this uh, material recycling facility stuff, they are costly. So, you have to as a company, you have to make money to sustain and to make money to sustain, you have to sell this product, whatever you are producing, you need to sell it. So, it gets very dependent on the market. So, if you have a market nearby, you are able, you, you may be in good shape, but if the market is not nearby, things becomes a little bit problematic. And uh, the short term cost, uh, the cost uh, is uh, much higher than landfill cost. So, that is why they, when people look at uh, uh, their budget, they look at immediate budget more quickly rather than having a more uh, detailed long term budget or long term impact. That is why this concept of LCA is very important, where you will try to look at the things in a bigger perspective, in a broader perspective. But here, the it is a short term cost, uh, short term cost the people look at and they find that the short term cost is much higher than the landfill cost and that kind of leads to uh, going for the landfill rather than going for these. Uh, uh, like a um, recycling or RDF or uh, MERC plants. And any any of these process uh, residue will remain a problem. So, for the residue we do need a landfill, so which uh, needs to go there. So, in terms of uh, the solid waste management, just kind of, so what, what is what is solid waste management? Uh, as as uh, I, I try to kind of 
uh, from time to time you will see a, uh, a slide or two where we try to kind of summarize and kind of trying to have to put everybody on the same page and then we kind of make progress based on that. So, in terms of the solid waste management what we have talked so far it is it is a comprehensive program where the waste is has to be prevented, recycled, composted. So, when we say compost it is just one of the example treatment technology it can be compost, it may be aerobic digestion, it could be waste to energy whatever. So, it is a comprehensive program of waste prevention, recycling, composting and disposal. So, and then it includes, so when you try to do that it includes the management of first of all you need to know how much waste is being produced. So, because that is say if you are trying to design something what should be the design data. So, the design data is how much waste is produced, how much the raw material I have to work with so that I can design my other stuff around it. So, waste generation and to do that we need to know the waste generation data and of course, we need to know the population data as well. Most of the time the solid waste management facilities they are not uh, uh, designed for a year or two years, they are typically designed for 25, 30 years time period. So, when you are looking at 25, 30 year time period you have to look at uh, okay, what is the current population and how, what will be the future population. So, you have to look at the, the population forecast, you have to look at the population forecast in terms of how the population of that particular city is going to change. And for the waste generation rate also ideally we should look at the waste generation rate how the waste generation rate will change. Today in the urban setting it is around 0.6 to 0.7 kg per person per day that is what CPHEQ manual, uh, CPHEO manual suggests to have a figure of around 0.6, 0.7 kg per person per day. But that number may change in future or the way our lifestyle is changing we are uh, using more and more packaged material. So, things that will lead to more and more waste being produced. So, in the developed countries the number actually goes uh, all the way up to sometimes uh, around 1.5 to 2 kg per person per day. But uh, in Indian context we are still at around 0 0.7 kg per person per day 0 0.6, 0 0.7 kg in average. So, we need to and that is from that uh, CPHEO manual. So, so that we need to know that how much is the waste generated and then so that we can design the storage system, we can design the collection system, we can design the transfer and transport system and uh, because everything will depend on what is the waste quantity and, uh, and also at, at the same time we need to uh, look at the processing cost, we will have to look at the disposal cost. So, in terms of the waste management uh, this includes the management of all these different components generation, storage, collection, transfer processing as well as disposal. So, that is uh, kind of gives a uh, good idea about the waste management uh, system. And another important aspect of the waste management is that uh, it is not only the engineering part what we have talked about so far is mostly from an engineering perspective, but there is a social dimension to it as well. It is a what is the public's attitude unlike water, wastewater or air where the public uh, you do not have to uh, for everyday work you are not really getting lot of imp, uh, influence from the public. Uh, you just go out and do your work uh, whatever uh, is, uh, is required, but in terms of the solid waste uh, the you are getting waste every day from the household. So, how the household is behaving, uh, how they are collecting the waste and disposing their waste that becomes critical in your uh, uh, you have to uh, kind of decide uh, how to how to go about that. So, that is that is really gets a little bit of tricky on that part. So, in terms of the solid waste management it is uh, you need to you need to have an understanding of the public attitude what is the towards the waste towards recycling towards landfill. So, many times when we do things we have a public consultation. So, it is uh, we need to have some sort of public consultation in terms of get their feedback and uh, that is very very important. So, the public attitude needs to be understood whether it is towards waste recycling. And then administration of the entire system that is also very very important how like how the administration of the system is going to work planning for like a planning of uh, how the for task and schedule to design uh, construct the programs all sorts of uh, and then. So, that is uh, in terms of uh, planning we have for like a take a design construct operate expand and even for landfills for other waste management facilities programs. And then the legislation part. So, it is not only the technical part which is important, we have the public attitude, the administration, the planning, uh, 
legislation, all these things has to be taken into consideration to have a good solid waste management. So that's why when I said very earlier, it's not only the engineering part, it's the management part which is very, very uh, critical as well. So as a result, the solid waste management is impacted by many different disciplines. Uh, so you need to have some knowledge uh, of uh, political science, which is uh, like a, it's, a, it's important in terms of how the politics will play out whether you will get the site for the landfill, whether you will not get the site for the landfill. So you need to have a little bit of understanding of that, the geography of the area, economics, whether you will be able to sell your recyclables, whether the project is going to be self-sufficient, and uh, public health issues, sociology issues, sociology in terms of the behavior aspect, because since you are getting the garbage every day from the household, how this household will behave and will give you the garbage, that becomes very, very important. So if, they are, if you are trying to do a source separation and if you don't get cooperation from the individual houses, then you, will, you are in a deep trouble actually in terms of doing uh, uh, the, the subsequent steps because uh, you need to get the weights uh, separated. So there are lots of issues and when we go into the collection part, we'll talk about that uh, there uh, as well. So that's, uh, that's very, very important. And uh, so that's the sociology part, communication, how to talk. Uh, how to make sure they communicate of the issues to the public. That's again very, very important. If you don't communicate uh, issues uh, in, a, in a decent way, in a clear way, you will have a problem what Nestle had for Maggie last year. So you need to uh, make sure the communication is correct. Uh, material science, because we are trying to use different materials for liners, for uh, daily cover, and for other, so there is a use of material science. Archaeology, archaeology, many, many people are actually interested in how uh, be how the waste is changing over time. Uh, there are some people, some writers who are, who research uh, the waste composition, like what kind of waste that particular area is producing, what kind of waste uh, that particular region is producing. That gives us the idea of how, what, what is the mindset of the people. So those kind of things also goes in there. And of course, the engineering. So it's not only a small, it's a, this, that's a basically a joke. Uh, it's, it's not a small component in the process. It's a very, very important component of the process. But the other aspect needs to be looked into as well, which many times as an engineer, we overlook. We don't actually look at those processes very carefully. So in the design and the management process, uh, we have to take the best practices of planning, public health, economics, engineering, conservation, aesthetics, and so environmental issues. So that's how we have to do this uh, design and management process. So we, when we do go for that, uh, there are, uh, in, the, in terms of when we start looking at the waste management system, there are we, what uh, many of these uh, books that you pick up, you will say that there would, they will what we call is six elements of the waste management system. So essentially, the, the, the whole system has been divided into six parts. So number one is waste generation. If the waste is generation is not there, we don't have to do a, any waste management, isn't it? If the people don't throw any garbage, there will be no garbage to work with. So, but people will throw out because that's the way our society <coughs> is uh, working. There are certain products or process or uh, um, material which we don't we don't need to use. So that actually that does get our dump uh, in in a trash can. So waste is a material. That, uh, and when you dump in a trash can, it has no further value to its owner. But that doesn't mean the waste doesn't have any value left. Some has further value to others by in terms of the reuse, which is the chemical ingredients, electronic parts, or compost for your garden. You can do that. Some is just the waste. So if you have a food wrapping, product containers, oil com oil com old computers, those are mostly the waste. But again, here, as this last bullet suggests, uh, as technology develops, something which is a waste today may not be waste tomorrow. So for example, food waste to methane, and for energy generation, for energy production. So that Food waste, like five, you can say 20 some years ago or 25, 30 years ago, nobody was talking about getting energy out of food waste, although maybe we were producing less food waste as well. But whatever food waste we were producing, there, there was no uh, to, to like a discussion on how to convert this food waste to energy. Today, that's a hot topic. So it's as because the technology has developed, which, is, uh, which makes uh, it to be profitable and to, to, uh, to do it especially if you do it in a large scale, where you try to convert this food waste to energy uh, using anaerobic digester, and then you use that energy for producing electricity or uh, other stuff. So that's uh, the waste generation part. And the second part is the handling, separation, storage, and processing at source. So if you can do the separation at source, 
So, we can put in a various containers like blue, green and white. In Indian context, we have two containers, green and the gray. So, green is for the food waste, gray is for uh, uh, like our your indirect food waste. So, that is uh, so, the so two is for uh, your recyclables and uh, so we use uh, like a wet and dry where you can separate the garbage in the Indian contest right now where the thing is uh, we can we have to separate the garbage in terms of wet and dry. So, dry is mostly recyclables and the other stuff wet is what can be uh, mostly organic in nature. So, if you can do the best uh, separation at source and you put it in blue, green and white that is uh, been different countries use as different color style and uh, then you make sure that uh, you separate the valuables from the waste. You have the paper, plastic, metals, those things should be separated. In India, again in Indian context, we have the Kabadi Wallas coming to our houses and collecting many of these. In big cities, uh, that is becoming a little bit rare, but it is still it happening where the paper, metals and plastic gets collected uh, anyway. And then you make sure that there is no contamination from hazardous waste. You have a proper on-site uh, storage for health reasons. And uh, you need to cooperation from the uh, citizens at home, at work, houses versus condos, apartments. And so, that is uh, like uh, you need to, because as you go from houses to on condos and apartments, you are, uh, your space is getting less. So, rather you, uh, the, what we, what has been seen is that uh, amount of mixed waste keeps on increasing in those scenarios. So, so those things uh, like if much of it uh, can get contaminated, uh, so that must be processed. On site processing can be composting or compaction into various containers. So, those things are done. So, next uh, step is collection and the collection is actually the most expensive component of solid waste handling. So, this is uh, in terms of the handling of the waste, uh, the waste collect the collection part is very, very expensive. So, what does it mean the collection? As the name suggests, you gather the waste and recyclables and transport to recycling center or transfer station or to the disposal facility. So, that is where uh, how this trans uh, system works and the location is, uh, it, so it is a, it, like we have a interim uh, disposal at the transfer station where this is smaller trucks bring the garbage at this uh, transfer station, which is then converted into a bigger truck, bigger trucks carries the garbage from the transfer station to the landfill. So, that depends on a function of distance uh, to the disposal site, if we have the disposal site distance is uh, uh, more having a transfer station makes sense. And the transportation of the garbage collection and transportation of the garbage is considered the most expensive part. And industries they handle separately from the municipal waste. So, the industrial waste is uh, handed in a different manner. So, so in terms of uh, other part is separation processing and transformation. So, once the waste is collected, uh, you have to take it to a facility where it can be uh, processed. Uh, there are special facilities to separate recyclables. It includes threading, compacting, screens, mechanical separators and all those machines are used and I will try to show you a small videos of that when we go to this particular chapter. Incineration and composting they considered, uh, uh, they are considered transformation of the waste as well. So, that is uh, that, that particular part and then you have to do transfer and transport. You can use truck, rail, barge, it is a smaller collection vehicle uh, then to transfer to a bigger collection vehicle. So, this transfer and transport is very, very important and uh, so that is uh, and we in so we the economics of this uh, is also very important which you will look at later too. And finally, disposal, disposal like landfilling we already talked about, uh, model landfill is engineered facility, uh, you produce methane and then you can use that methane for the energy or you can do the flaring of that. So, and the incinerated waste could have different uh, would have different characteristics. So, you need to make sure it is not a hazardous waste and then you can dispose it. Uh, so, that is how the six elements of the waste management system works. So, in summary, if you look at the solid waste management is an integrated system. So, it is uh, you start from uh, generation that is your number one. From generation you go to source separation where things are separated out then goes to collection part where it is uh, gets into the truck and uh, gets collected. Then from the collection you can take it the facility separation where it can be sep sep separated further uh, and transfer and transport, composting and then finally, incineration or landfilling as you can see the uh, this is how things will typically work. So, that is kind of gives you a big idea about the waste management system, what are the different components. So, as the course progresses for this municipal solid waste over the next 8 weeks, we will be going into each of these components and, and trying to have more details about that from an engineering perspective, uh, what are the things we need to do and uh, some of the design aspect associated with that as well. So, 
for that let us uh, stop this uh, uh, module right now and then uh, we will uh, start our discussion continue our discussion in the next module again thank you and uh, welcome.